Great. Well, I am going to start because we want all the time that we can get today with Amy. This is our last of a four series class with her. And um, it's been so great to work with Amy and to have her as part of this library program. And it's sad that it's our last time, but the good news is, is that Amy is available. Um, <laughs> she does weekly somatic movement classes. She does workshops on breath and body, pelvic floor empowerment. She does series classes on the myth of aging and finding your center. And she does private sessions and small group sessions. And her email is Amy emergeyoga at gmail.com and you can follow her on Instagram and I will put all of that in the chat so that you don't have to try to remember in this moment I'll put it in there I'll also put a link to the Kellogg Hubbard Library adult programs page that's where the videos of the classes that she has done so far we, we're going to have three out of the four we didn't we didn't um, record the first one but we're recording this one and we recorded the two previous so if you want to keep doing this you can go to that that page on the Kellogg Hubbard Library's website and you can watch the YouTube video of her previous classes and this class, or if you know somebody else who wished they could be here, who doesn't, um, then you can direct them there as well. We will also have, um, there's somebody so that's a good reminder that um, for the class, we'll have everybody be on mute so that um, we'll only hear Amy. <laughs> Cause that's a really common thing. I was waiting for my dog to maybe settle down. I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. Um, to get us ready, so that's good. I'm also gonna put in the chat um, a survey of uh, programming for the Kellogg Hubbard Library. We're running a survey to get people's feedback on what kind of programming that they like and that they wanna see at the library. So if you have something to add there, I'll put that all in the chat. If you don't know about the chat, if you hover down at the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon, a word bubble icon. If you press it, that brings up the dialogue box and then you can type in there. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Amy. Great, great. All right, well, welcome everybody. And um, yeah, I will just again say that I want you to make sure that you're listening to your body deeply. And if any of the movement that I guide doesn't feel okay in your body, you can start by making the movement smaller, slower, doing just a few repetitions or pausing and not doing the movement. Um, and there's always, I'll give you um, a, a breath exercise right now that you could use in any position, standing, sitting, lying down um, as, a, as a thing to go to if the movement we're doing just isn't feeling right for you. So um, I guess for now, just wherever you're at, we'll, we'll just do it together. And it is putting hands at the side of the rib cage. You have low, low rib cage. You could have mid rib cage. You could even do it high up if you want, but let's for now start with the lower rib cage. And um, it's just breathing sideways into your hands. You're trying to expand the breath sideways. And then you're letting it go and see if you can do that breath through the nose, in and out through the nose. You could also do it this way if that feels better for your shoulders or neck. Okay. And then another breath exploration that you could do if you want to just, if you find that you need to take a pause from anything I'm guiding, is you can place one hand, kind of, you have your collarbones here, you have the length of your sternum here. So you're kind of letting the hand kind of span the length of the sternum. And then you're letting your other hand kind of span from the bottom of the sternum towards your belly button, maybe even beyond your belly button. And again, whether you're sitting, standing, or lying down, taking a couple breaths where you're just aware of, and you can even just depress in slightly. So there's like a little hug of those hands. Kind of trying to breathe forward into the sense and presence of your hands. If you were to be, happen to be lying on your back when you do this, you also then get the feedback of the floor behind you. So just do one more of those. And then just bring the arms down. And just notice how you feel after having had just a few moments with those two different breath exercises. Great. Okay. 
And just know you can always return to those if you want to take a pause from anything we're doing. All right, we are going to start with a movement that is one-sided first, and then we're going to do the other side, but in between, we're going to check in. So um, and we're going to link this to a couple things that people brought up at the beginning of class. So um, I think sitting is the easiest way to do this one. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you can sit in a way where you have your feet planted on the floor, I'll just let you see kind of up close and then I'll, I'll the, the distance and I'll come closer, but here, instead of legs crossed or instead of heels lifted, knees close together, like feet are planted, hip width apart, solid on the floor, and that you're sitting on your sits bones. And I like to sometimes uh, sit just a little higher so my hips are a little higher than my knees. And I find that helps my spine align in a way that feels a little bit more comfortable and it requires less work to feel like I'm sitting more upright. Okay. Lovely. So you you won't um, you're not going to see my whole body, but it, it doesn't really matter now that we've got the bottom part <laughs> situated. Um, what I want you to pay attention to is the sides of the rib cage. So pick a side. If you have a side that you know tends to be a side that is either normally feels tighter or has something going on with it, let's start with that side. Okay. Um, the first thing you're going to do is just touch from the top of your hip all the way up, whether it's a massage touch or you're just pushing or you're just sliding the hand, you're just bringing your awareness with your hand to that side of your body. So this is something that you can do throughout your day. If you think of this as ideas, like, all right, tips and ideas you can do to kind of, you know, whoop, hit that reset button is touch to a part of your body that is niggly or that you feel really disconnected from you can use your own hand as a way to literally bring your mind's awareness to that place. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay. Now what you're going to do is slowly pull your armpit down. That same side, that armpit's going to pull down and you'll notice that you've kind of come into a little mini side bend sort of. And then I want you to stop doing that which means you're releasing that. So we're gonna try it again. You're slowly pulling that armpit down. You might notice it means your shoulder blade is sliding. You might notice the body kind of tips a little bit. And then you slowly release those muscles that pulled the blade down. We're not pulling ourselves out with the other side. One more time, armpit pulls down. Let yourself actually feel the sensation of the movement. If you feel body parts going in that direction, just let them. And then you slowly release the muscles that pulled the armpit and shoulder blade down. All right, great, there you go. Now you're gonna slide that shoulder blade up. This is kind of a revisit of the very first class where we go into a place on purpose where we sometimes get and we don't realize we're doing it. Now just slowly release those muscles that pulled that blade up. You're trying to control the letting go. Do that same side one more time. Letting yourself feel the exploration of, oh, there's muscles contracting, pulling my shoulder blade and arm bone up. And then whatever you feel that contracted to do that, you slowly now let them release. I noticed it all the way up to the base of my skull. Keep releasing, keep releasing until you're like, okay, I'm done. Lovely. Now this hip that's right here, you're going to hike it up toward your armpit. You'll notice your weight has shifted on your seat. And then I want you to slowly release it. Do that again. You're slowly hiking it up. This might feel really weird. You might feel a lot of kind of strain trying to do this, but I want you to think for a moment, all the times you might sit cross-legged, all the times you might kind of stand with one weight and one hip, that's what's happening in your body. So now we're just doing it on purpose so you can feel how much effort and work that is. And then you can slowly release it to neutral. Lovely. 
Okay. Bring this hand to the hip. So we're still working on the same side and you're slowly going to lean away from that side. So your other hand can be at your hip or your thigh. It's totally up to you. And then just come back to center. And just revisit that a few times. We're trying to build stamina around the ability to move slower and with awareness, because sometimes it can be hard. So just know if, if this is like really slow, <laughs> it's okay. And it's okay to be maybe not sure how you feel about it. Now, if you'd like, you can bring the hand here so that you go as far as your torso took you. And then what if you let that arm move, the elbow kind of moves up a little bit toward the ceiling and then come back to center. And this time, let that elbow move down. This aggravates your shoulder for whatever reason and let it go. This time we're gonna initiate with the arm. The arm rises up and then the torso goes. We're going in the same, we're still on that same side, focus on the same side. And then come back to center. Now bring this hand so your thumb touches your sternum and your fingertips fit right under your chin. And you're just keeping your chin in line with your sternum. So the side you just side bended with, that side is now gonna turn into a rotation. And you're just gonna go however far you can go, but you're not using your hands to take you. And then you come back to center. And then you do it again. <laughs> so you're gently turning and then coming back to center. What if you go the other direction now? One more time in each direction. We're not using our arms so that we have to ask the muscles of the torso and along the spine to figure out how to rotate us. And we're keeping the head in line with the sternum because sometimes the muscles of the torso don't know how to do this anymore. They've kind of forgotten, but our neck and head really easily knows how to turn. So we're just trying to keep the work in the torso. So come back to center. So let this arm come down, roll it outward, let it rise up. If it feels comfortable to reach all the way up, put your other hand at your hip. You can do a side bend, making that side we've been focusing on, make that side long. If it feels better to have the hand here at the hip, then do it and then come back. Let that arm come down. Hand at this one side of your rib cage. You are going to breathe into that one side of your rib cage. Think of inhaling, expanding into your hand. All focus on that one side. And exhaling. And again. This time, let the exhale out through the mouth with a sigh or some kind of elongated sound. Bring that hand down and just take a couple breaths here. And I want you now to check in with the side that we focused on, the other side that we haven't focused on, and just let yourself notice if anything feels different between the sides. It might, it might not. We did something similar in a class I taught this morning and um, there was a sense for folks in there that something felt different, more spacious, a little more open, whatever. And the other side felt tighter, more constricted. So whether that's happened for you or not, we're gonna now start to move the other side. I do wanna bring in that idea of, go ahead and touch the other side, that idea of how the organs of our body function if our bodies feel tight, restricted, held compared to if they feel open, spacious, free, um, similar to how the, all the systems of our body might work. But then as somebody brought up this idea of mind as well, the thoughts we have um, and how the thoughts, the emotions might feel different or be different. 
depending upon how muscular skeletally we um, feel in our body too. So just kind of ponder and think about that. We're just touching again this whole side. The reason why touch is because it starts to um, stimulate that part of your body in your brain. Lovely. We might do things in a slightly different order on this side. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. We're going to actually start going up and sliding that shoulder blade up. Feel all the muscles, even all the way up to the head that contract to do that. And then slowly release. Do that same thing one, maybe two more times, but remember that it's far better. You get more benefit doing it very mindful and slow and as smooth as possible compared to doing more and more reps, but not really tuning into the sensation of the movement. What if you pull the blade down now? Toward the armpit, can you feel the muscles that are responsible for pulling it down? And then you decide not to do that anymore and you release them. These muscles that pull the blade down can tend to get like activated when we're like on, ready, prepared, or we are like, wait, I'm slouching, I better stand up straight. Those muscles really ramp down. So we're giving them an opportunity to go further than they might be used to doing and then releasing out of them. What if we do the hip? What if we hike that hip? If you got little ones, then you're probably used to holding a kid on your hip, right? We sit cross-legged. We are used to having one half of us contracted like that. One more time. And then releasing. Let's go ahead and start movement of this arm. So go ahead and you're gonna move this arm in any way you want. This is different from the other side. But what I want you to do is see if you can tune into, oh, the side of my body is involved in moving this arm. So depending upon where you move that arm, can you feel how there's some muscles here or even along the back side? that help to move it basically. And if, let's for an example, if those muscles that pull the blade down are kind of stuck pulling the blade down and they stay there, it's harder to move our arm. Whereas if those muscles know how to release, the arm can move bigger and fuller. They know how to contract and pull down, they can move the arm down more. Okay. And then let's turn this into side bending. So on this side, you're gonna explore side bending. This arm might wanna be at your hip for support. This other arm can be at your shoulder. It can extend, it can be at your hip, it's up to you. And you'll notice on this side, I'm not being as specific about what movement exactly to do when with the arm and the side bend, because I want you to gain comfort around, huh, I know how to explore side bending slowly. <laughs> that you don't feel like if you were to bring this in on your own later, that you don't feel like, oh, there's certain, certain exact steps I have to follow. It's more or less just break down the parts of movement and actually feel them. Same thing with the rotation. I will say it's great to connect your head to your sternum so that we can actually start to explore rotation of the torso. And you just slowly go in one direction, back to center, over to the other side. And let your awareness just stay focused on the side that we're tending to. And sometimes what we're feeling in our shoulder, or what we're feeling in our neck, or even farther down in our hip has something to do with what's going on in the torso, not just directly in these other pinpointed spots where we might be feeling some niggly stuff or some pain sensation. Great, come back to 
come back to center. And at that side of the rib cage now. So the other side, this is where you're gonna just breathe into that one side of the rib cage. Which technically you're not just breathing into that one side of your rib cage, but you're putting your intention and awareness to that side. One more time. And this time, let an exhale out through the mouth. And then let that arm go. And again, this is your moment just to check in. A couple breaths, just noticing both sides again. All right, go ahead and we're gonna to shift to stand, but in the little inter interplay between sitting and standing, do a little thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down. If you had a sense of, I could feel something different on one side compared to the other. Just to get a sense of if this is okay, great. Okay, all right. So there is benefit of doing some of that one-sided thing. Um, so that you get a chance to actually recognize what's helpful, what's not helpful, but also what kind of holding patterns are there in our bodies that we are totally unaware of. All right, we're standing and you're just gonna let your feet be hip width apart, maybe even wider. Uh, and we're just gonna rock side to side. So for this first one, those of you who mentioned knees, um, just some of the th stuff that we do is gonna involve knee bending. Um, so just know that um, you're gonna see how it feels for you. I'm gonna step a little closer for you to see right now. It's this shift here, side to side. It's not so much about knees bending. We're not doing that right now. It's just legs are kind of staying straight, but we're just trying to shift the pelvis side to side. If the hips are tight, and we have less mobility of our legs and our hip sockets, then the hips will feel tight, the low back could feel tight, and then downward knees down to the feet could have, um, you know, just interesting things happen. So that's the first thing. Now we're gonna change this uh, to a subtle difference. So you can see my shirt line, it just happens to fall right where my leg bones meet my hip socket. So I want you to find where is that for you? And sometimes it's helpful to find the tops of your hips and then slide your hands down. And then there's the top of your leg bones. And now you're gonna tip kind of like a metronome. So this, I'll, I'll zoom the camera back in a second is your pelvis moving on top of your leg bone. So it's another way, it's a subtle difference, but it's another way to start to get some movement into the hip area that we don't normally do. We normally stand and sit <laughs> and walk forwards. And that can create a lot of um, tightness if we're just moving in that one plane of motion. So you'll notice that my upper body is not side bending with nothing happening here, we're trying to actually get movement into the hip, okay? And we're just slowly repeating it. Great. And then come back to center. And then what you're going to do is kind of similar, but we're gonna change what's happening with our legs. So here you were with your knees and toes forward, you're gonna turn just one leg out and stay with one leg pointing forward. You'll notice I didn't say turn your foot out, turn the very top of your thigh bone out. Wherever it goes, that's where it goes. Don't try to make your foot go further. And then you're just gonna revisit the same thing. You're trying to tip your pelvis on top of your leg. So if you say spend a lot of time sitting at a computer, but you have the opportunity to put your computer up a little higher and try some standing time that this is a great thing you can do during that. Go ahead and switch legs, turn that leg bone in from up here, turn the other leg bone out from up here, wherever your foot lands, that's where it lands. Don't push your foot further. 
and then tip. Another way you can think of this is what are other activities, daily use type activities that you do where you're standing for a while? And you could like do some of these movements where you just bring it in, washing the dishes, right? Talking on the phone with someone, you could stand instead of sitting. <laughs> And the whole goal of these are, can I move the pelvis? Can I move the leg bones? And can we try to get some different movement into the hip joints? Which can help downward knees and feet. All right, come back to center, turning the leg bones so knees and toes point forward. And then now just wriggle the feet a little closer so they're hip width apart. Great. We're gonna roll the arms out bring the fingertips to the shoulders and then lift the elbows up slightly. And then we'll let the arms float down, elbows down, then unfurl the arms and then let the arms just rest by your side. So this focus is on shoulder girdle a little bit. You're rolling the arm bones out. Can you feel how the blades move toward the spine? How the muscles back here contract. You might even feel up here contract. And then slowly release. So what I want you to notice is how do you normally stand? Some of us might stand with the backs of our palms facing forward. Some stand with our palms on our sides. Some stand with our palms facing forward. Do that again. Roll your arm bones out so your palms face forward. And can you feel that there's contraction and work happening back here? If that is our go-to norm all the time, those muscles are constantly working. So practice releasing out of that and see if you can let your palms rest by the sides of your body. Great, roll those arm bones out again. This time, rise the elbows up and just be aware of the work happening on the back line and then shift it into a little side bend and standing. Great, I like to put my other hand at the hip. It just feels better in my body. You can go ahead and do that to the other side, but notice how your arms have to totally change position. The arm has to roll inward to put the palm at that hip. So just like legs moving in your hip socket, it's really important to have good movement there. It's really to have good, important to have good movement of your arm bone and your shoulder girdle. All right, let the arms hang. You're gonna give a little wriggle. A little horse breath. Sometimes this is the best reset ever. You're just wriggling and letting that exhale out. Great. If it feels okay in your body, especially in your knees to do a little bounce, that is another great way to just release some stress, tension, holding, especially if it's up in the upper body, you can kind of imagine just coming down, down and releasing. Great. And then we'll turn this into a gentle twist. So if standing and doing this work is aggravating knees, um, try the sitting. It won't be able to be necessarily this kind of free fluid rotation, um, but you can work with gentle seated rotation. So there's no torquing in the knees. And I like to lift my other heel up wherever I look, my opposite heel lifts off the floor. So there's less torque. But if we're thinking again about hips with this movement, Every time we do this, the pelvis is moving on top of the leg bone. So it's another way to let the hip area get some movement that isn't its normal everyday movement. And the arms are just a little floppy and they swing. Now let's say you're tired. It's the middle of the day or maybe four o'clock <laughs> and Oh, you're just feeling really tired. You can also make this much more active, have a big bend in the knees, a bigger swing in the arms, and you can be more active with the breath. And this is a way that you can, don't get lightheaded. <laughs> this is a way that you can get a little oomph going, 
and the body might feel a little more energized after. Because sometimes the reset isn't just because we need to just release stress or tension, but like we need to maybe like up our energy. All right, coming back to stillness. Oh, that's great. I see a fair bit of jumping around happening too. That's awesome. All right, I want you to decide if you would like to come to the floor. We're gonna do movement of the spine. You could do it sitting or you could do it lying on the floor. I'm going to lead it sitting, um, but I'm gonna quickly show you the floor setup if you wanna try it on the floor, okay? So ideally you have something that's soft enough so that you feel like there's some cushion underneath you. And you're gonna be here on your back. So the floor is here to support you. So I want you to try to relax into the floor. If you're sitting, just feel the support of the chair. Um, and even though the floor is there to support you and you can relax into it, you might also notice that the floor might feel like, oh, it, it gets in the way a little bit too, but just use the floor as feedback. I'm gonna say, move your spine X, Y, or Z certain ways. And you're just gonna do that here on the floor. Okay, so this might be what it looks like of just finding any direction of movement that your spine can make and doing it slowly. Okay, the seated version is sitting so that you're on your sits bones. Your feet are flat on the floor like we did before. Right. I like to sit more closer to the edge of the chair because it helps me sit on my sits bones. And just slow, gentle movement of the spine. And there's all sorts of directions that these vertebrae can move in. And part of the reason why we're moving slow is because most likely you are kind of moving from one direction into the other and it's it's incorporating a curl forward plus some gentle rotation. Um, and you wanna make sure that feels okay in your body. Even if we move small, if we move fast, we can tweak things still. So the slow is the opportunity, you know, just to feel into the sensation of the movement, but to also take care. And if you find that you're more drawn to more on um, specific directions of movement, think of them as four, four directions. Well, well, maybe six, actually, if you think of it this way, curling forward is one. And arching backwards is another. The side bending in both directions are two more. And then the rotation in both directions are two more. So those are kind of the six main directions you could think about. But again, in between all of those are all sorts of organic -y, little snaky like movement of the spine. Relax the jaw. If you're on the floor on your back, and you kind of like lying down, but you kind of feel like, well, I wanna be in a slightly different position. You could also try side lying, support your head with a pillow and you can still move your whole spine that way. And you'll notice your hips are moving, your shoulders are moving, your head follows and just let it all happen. You're just going nice and slow. And ideally you aren't holding your breath throughout this, that you're letting the breath just like a current move through your body as you're moving. So in a moment or two, I want you to come back to center and pause and just do another little check-in. How does your body feel? How is the breath? moving through your body. And again, what are the thoughts that are there? What's the feel, the energy 
in the body. We're going to go back to a comment somebody brought in in the beginning about this idea of when we have a place that kind of is getting our attention because it might be niggly or painful. Let's actually bring through touch with a hand awareness to that place, but we're going to start farther away and move towards. So I'm going to just demo the knees because somebody brought up that knees would be a great place to focus on. You can choose any part in your body that you can comfortably reach and that feels good for you. And um, you're just going to start a little bit further away. So for me, if I'm focusing on knee, I'm just going to start um, mid thigh or something. And I'm just having some attention with my hand moving toward that area. It could be the sides of the leg. Again, you're doing whatever part of your body you'd like to have attention to. And I'd love for you to think about this. Um, not as whatever this part is, oh, I have to fix it, there's something wrong with it, but you are just sending some care and attention to this place. And it doesn't have to be massage touch. I think even first starting with just sweeping touch is helpful. And then if you wanna shift more toward touch that kind of gets into the tissue layer a little bit, you can do that. And especially if it's a joint, I just want you to be aware of that things come together to create that joint. So the knee in particular, it's not really a knee, <laughs> it's two lower leg bones, it's a thigh bone, there's a knee cap. There's all sorts of muscles that come all the way from down low where the feet all the way up and from the hip all the way down. So then after you've touched an area, leave your hand there and then start to let some movement come into that area. I like to use my other arm to kind of help support the movement. And it's gonna be very dependent on what is happening for you and your body and what body part you picked. <laughs> if it's your shoulder, you could, whatever shoulder you're focusing on, you could support the other arm, that arm with your hand, your other hand, and you can move that arm that way, right? So you gotta get creative about it. And then as you are focused on this area now, kind of moving that area, I want you to now think, expand your awareness and take in all the other parts that are like, oh, it's my leg moving in my hip too. Oh, my ankle might be moving. Oh, my arm bone is, oh, my shoulder blade. Oh, my whole torso is. And just let yourself make that connection of local and then global, like zoomed in and expanded, okay? Great. <laughs> you have a helper there. <laughs> and then go ahead and just plant down whatever part of that body you are using. Let your arms rest. Let's come back to both hands again, sides of the rib cage. Let your thumbs, if it's comfortable, drape toward the back of the rib cage. And do a few breaths where you're breathing sideways into the ribs, toward your hands, but also into the back side of the rib cage too. We're gonna bring that awareness of the breath lower down and expanding it. One more. And let's let a little sigh or something. <sighs> Up through the mouth. Now, give yourself a chance to move around in your space if you'd like, or to kind of slowly, especially if you're on the floor, kind of make your way back here toward the group of us. And we have a few moments here to just check in if there's any questions anybody has or anything that they noticed, any things that were helpful, you're welcome to share them, unmute yourself, or put any little message in the um, chat box, but 
I guess my main takeaways that I hope you receive from this class and the other ones, if you took them, is that um, you don't need 45 minutes. <laughs> you need three minutes, two minutes, five minutes, maybe. And you're just asking yourself to kind of listen in, listen to what your body needs, do some subtle, gentle, slow, paying attention movement and connect with your breath. How's everybody doing? Any thoughts or questions? Thank you. You are so welcome. I was just going to say that. Actually, last time you mentioned this too, rolling your shoulders in and out. I mean, there's so many movements you can do with your shoulders. Yeah. That was really helpful. It stuck with me. You mentioned it this time too. Good. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, the breaking down.